Today on First Cup, I'm going to tell you all about my crazy weekend. I've got a little bit of show and tell here, making some noise. I'm going to talk about the thing that I've been doing for close to 20 years to keep me productive that I'm considering changing. And we'll talk about today's episode of Martial Arts Radio. Stick around. We roll in 15. I guess it's a little less than 15, isn't it? Three, two, one. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Today is Monday. It's November 8th, 2021. My name is Jeremy. This is my first cup of coffee. Woo-wee! What a weekend. And you know what? I'm really excited with the time change. The fall back an hour has historically been one of my favorite times of year because I feel like I get to catch up on sleep a little bit. Good morning, Jenny. Good morning, Stacy. And you know what? It's light outside right now. Barely, but it is. I can see light. Now, of course, that's going to change for the next, uh, over the next, what, six weeks? Seven weeks. But it's it's something. Good morning, Francis. Had a great talk with Francis on Friday. Well, what a weekend. Here, let me give you some show and tell. Rhode Island Comic Con press badge. Uh, Andrew and I were there starting Saturday morning and I don't, I don't even know how to describe it. It was insane. It was utterly insane. There would have been no way for me to properly take photos and video to convey the insanity of this event that would have been appropriate. Um, and honestly, even acceptable. Uh, they really wanted us as press. We, we got a lot of instruction about engagements that we could have and couldn't have. And for example, we were not allowed to interview guests, you know, the people that the, the celebrities that they brought in there, we were allowed to set up interviews for later, which, you know, I'll talk more about in a minute. Uh, but there was even a, even an email that went out Sunday morning that said, Hey, if you interviewed Tom Arnold on Friday, yes, Tom Arnold was there. Uh, we need to talk to you. Somebody got in trouble. <laughs> it was nuts. I showed you at some point last week the shirt that we were going to wear front and back. It said, martial artist, question mark, talk to me. And it worked well. It worked so well that I talked to people who were at our tournament in 2016. I talked to people who knew about the show. It worked so well that we had a celebrity call us over it's like um we had a nice chat with lou ferrigno about self-defense he he fist bumped me i didn't fist bump him he fist bumped me uh we talked to a bunch of people it was great dennis says is free training day this saturday woo and i can hear you doing that woo my friend free training day is this coming saturday and I am, I'll tell you what, I am so pumped on martial arts and whistle kick right now from this weekend and what's coming next weekend. It's, it's out of control. Andrew and I spent a couple hours Friday night. I crashed at his place and we went to the venue and we talked about all the things. There were just so many notes of all the things that we have to do. We spent literally two hours debriefing in the car, excuse me, yesterday, pretty much the entire ride from Providence back to Keene. New Hampshire, where he lives. And there are a thousand and one things that we'll do next year and in the future and ideas that we're going to pull. My favorite thing about this, other than it got us into the event for free, um, all we had to do when we walked around, because there were there were checkpoints and, and you know security and they wanted to make sure that people were doing certain things. And we would just go press and they'd be like, oh, thank you. Sorry. It, it was amazing. We're cutting lines. It was press. If, you, if you've never had the chance to have a press badge, I highly encourage it. Everybody else had, you know, regular badges or VIP badges or whatever, but everybody had VIP badges. So being a VIP, because all you had to do was spend a little more money, nobody was a VIP. It was like the, the way uh, people talk about the Fast Pass at Disney. But shout out to Craig, got to hang out with him a bit, met some of his friends, and 
the one last thing I want to say about this event, because I, I, th I think from the martial arts perspective, this is something that you all might find interesting. In. That shirt that I showed you last week, you know, martial artist question mark, it obviously suggests that the wearer, myself, Andrew, we are martial artists, right? If you look at most whistle kick apparel, we don't put the word martial arts on it because I don't want you to be out in public having a drink or, or, or socially with friends and some idiot comes up to you and they're like, you do martial arts, you want to fight, right? There was absolutely no vibe of any of that. I have never been in a larger group of people where I saw fewer problems. We talked to some security guards and actually had some really nice conversations with, with this one security guard in particular. And I asked some questions, you know, about problems and everything and kind of relayed what I just said. And he said, you know, people drink and that's about it. You know, you get some people who drink too much. And now I don't know how you're drinking too much when the beers are $13. The, the idea of getting drunk on $13 beers does not appeal to me, but you know, it takes all kinds. We didn't see any of that. Everybody was super cool, uh, really kind, really friendly, really supportive. And we told a ton of people about what we're doing. And we handed out uh, promo cards for martial arts radio and even some stickers. So we may end up with some new friends some new followers. And I'm looking forward to that. Press match. <laughs> All right. So free training day Saturday. I know most of you know about it maybe all of you know about it some of you are coming it's gonna be awesome after seeing the venue and working out some logistical stuff with andrew i am 100 percent convinced this will be our best year yet jared said whistle kick is subtle if someone recognizes it it's a clue that they know that you know that they know it's deep that is that is also quite subtle. Uh, put up a post, what was it, yesterday about how to dress for free training day. I've got emails from people asking questions. Most of this week is going to be about free training day, either explicitly or implicitly, just managing all of these things, answering questions and whatnot. The short of it is, if you can get there, get there. This is a transitional year for us being in a new location and some of the upside that we're doing is, is great. We have things internally starting Friday night. Uh, I'm doing some stuff for the team, which I'm really excited to do. We're all getting together for dinner. We're doing a special training for the team. And then Saturday, you know, we've got the day and then we've got dinner together. Everybody's invited to this one. You're all paying your own. Uh, but we've got other things that we're trying to do to extend that out because a lot of people are staying over Saturday night in the area. So why not? Why not provide more? Why not make free training day more, more, more? Let's do it. I don't know. If the, I'm guessing this is Gabe says, or maybe it's Jenny. Can't wait to see you all. It's super excited to see you guys. Justin from, of Marshall Journal is in New England. We have confirmation he is here. So we'll see him. Good morning, Eric. Yeah. Now today, it's Monday, which means we've got an episode of Martial Arts Radio. Now, I don't remember who it is, so I'm going to look, because I never remember. Oh, one more thing to add. We went a little bit deeper on some of this stuff. There's a full debrief. Andrew and I did a debrief in the car, 20 or so minutes that's going into Patreon. So if you are a Patreon person, hopefully you will see that today. I can't promise. Today is insane for me, but I'm going to do my best. Um, but if you want to go behind the scenes on stuff, and I'm going to be honest, there's going to be more things coming like this and thus more behind the scenes. And if you enjoy the behind the scenes, if you want to know more, if you want to be able to connect dots and maybe infer, because we can't say anything yet on the five people that gave us, yes, I will come on to your podcast at Comic-Con. No, we don't mean random strangers that were walking around said, I'll come on your show. Wait, where's the where's the voice here? Nah, I'll come on your show. There it is. No, I don't mean that. I mean 
every one of those people had a financial incentive to be there. So we'll leave it at that. You could probably go to the Rhode Island Comic Con website and you might want to, if you were curious, look at who was there. And then from who was there, you might look around and say, who would be appropriate to bring on martial arts radio? And uh, you might make some guesses. We have some huge stuff coming. That's all I'm going to say. Stacy says, I'm so wishing I could actually train. I'm having trouble even getting in and out of bed or the tub. Pictures? Yep. Well, you know what, Stacy? There's all kinds of training. And part of what's coming together for Friday night is not... You guys know me. It's for, for, for those on the team who are coming, it's not just going to be drills and whatever. There's there's gonna be more than that. Jared's suggesting RDJ, Robert Downey Jr. He famously does Wing Chun. He does famously do Wing Chun. He was not there. I would love to have him on. If anybody wanna help wants to help me get to. Robert Downey Jr. That would be great. Frank says, I'm so happy for you, Jeremy. Thank you, Frank. It was a great time. It was such a great time, and it was so productive that a good part of what Andrew and I talked about in our debrief was, what do we do next year? Because we're verbally committing to doing this again next year. Uh, and what did we learn that we might apply to similar events? And yeah. Because there are similar events. Now, this is a large one, but there are similar events that we could make work in the, you know, in an appropriate drive area and keep moving up on guests. And I'm excited for that. All right. Monday. Monday means, is it this one? All right. So today's episode is with Sensei David Hogsett, who, is it this guy? Hold on. Is it the guy I'm thinking of? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, he's an author, longtime multidiscipline martial artist, recently moved to China. Uh, it, was a, it was a really cool conversation. Check out the audio. It's on YouTube. It's in your podcast feed. You know, it's interesting when people, when we told people about the podcast, the number one question was, is it on Spotify? More people asked about if it was on Spotify. And I'm guessing that's because maybe there are podcasts that aren't on Spotify. Well, our, ours is. It's everywhere. You can't miss it. So check that one out. Now, the episode we did on Thursday about, uh, with the title, is MMA Ruining Traditional Martial Arts? I've found the responses on that one interesting. The responses can be categorized in two ways. Someone who understood what we were trying to say and agreed or mostly agreed with the general premise. Uh, it seemed that some of the people who disagreed were doing so from the standpoint of particular anecdotal experience, you know, this school that I train at or this person or, or whatever that breaks this being a, a an overwhelming, all-encompassing statement. And yeah, in the episode, we, we absolutely said that, 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 you know, not everybody who does MMA fits this mold and not everybody who does traditional martial arts is this, right? These are generalizations. We weren't saying they were 100%. And then you had people, we had some people who clearly did not watch or listen to the episode and argued a position that they thought we were taking which was really interesting. Uh, there were some comments that came in over the weekend on the YouTube, and I, I got to jump in on that. But if you haven't checked out that episode, I would like you to, because I think it's a good example of some of the content that we're going to start doing. We've been, a, we've got more reach now. We have more people paying attention to what we're saying, doing, and it's time to turn the volume up a little bit on some of the things that we say. And the response from people this weekend was clear validation to me that people are ready and we're ready. We're ready to make these statements. 
So if you haven't checked out that one, because I think it's such an important episode, please go back and check it out and let us know what you think. Okay. Uh, there was even, you know, I'm at the point now, I've got another tripod over there ready to go for the phone. I was flipping through TikTok this morning and there was somebody, again, making these co making comments about younger black belts and, and ignoring the fact that the rank is not equivalent. So I will be addressing that video later. Who knows when? <laughs> Jared says, whistle kick, subtle and controversial. Right on. All right, let's dig into what you left me. Uh, of course, we pull these comments primarily from the Facebook group. Of course, if you are not on Facebook, you are welcome to email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com, and I will do my best to get those incorporated into a future episode. And today, let's see. <laughs> oh, Frank. Frank, I think you're trying to become Andrew's friend now. This Wednesday will be the 32nd anniversary of the martial arts he writes this in capital letters, classic, best of the best. Here's some trivia from imdb.com. Opening weekend in the U.S. and Canada brought in $990,000, so just shy of a million dollars, November 12th, 1989. In today's money, that's a little over $2 million. If you look back, in the 80s, those martial arts movies were generally good financial risks. I don't know how much you know about the movies, but if you take a look at, pick your, pick a couple movies from IMDb, you dig down, you can find the budget. How much money did they spend to make this movie? And then what did opening weekend bring in and what did ultimately the gross revenue oh, excuse me, become? Because it is a financial, it, it's an investment. When a movie like, um, Avengers Infinity War that was something like a billion dollars to make. They've got to make at least a billion dollars back. Otherwise, it's dumb. But if you have a billion dollars, ideally, that movie has to become a better investment than another way to invest a billion dollars. So if you're doing a billion, you're hoping you're going to pull two or three because that's a lot of money. When you look at these old martial arts movies, a lot of them were hundreds of thousands of dollars to make, which, you know, it's a lot for a person. It's not a lot for a movie studio. And then, you know, they rode that wave of those martial arts movies we consider classics today in the theater. And they made, you know, two, three, four million dollars in the theater. That's a good return on investment. If I could do that, I would. <laughs> Frank even admits, yeah, this one's for you, Andrew. Number two, MMA legend Chuck Liddell names Best of the Best as his favorite martial arts movie. Well, I should reach out to John Hackleman and find out if that's really true. Because I don't know if you know, John Hackleman was uh, an early coach for Chuck Liddell. And actually, um, in conversation with... Um, Wow, my brain's not fully awake yet. Okay. Um, in conversation this weekend, you know, we have heard people bringing up John Hackleman, and I was like, oh, he's been on the show. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, he's been on the show. It's a good time. Dennis says, yes, Chuck. Right on, right on. Uh, and then third, Simon and Philip Reed. Dehan and Tommy Lee are real life brothers. Hmm. Did not know that. Well, I knew Simon and Philip were brothers. Sweet. So, what else is going on this today? Uh, today is my standard Monday. Lots of meetings. Have a meeting with, with Craig and a bunch of other clients, and then have something kind of interesting going on this evening and I want to make sure I share it in a way that doesn't expose my clients because I, I do my best not to tell the public about my clients even though sometimes 
they're happy to talk about it. You know, that's I, that doesn't feel appropriate to me. I've got clients. Um, it's a, it's a, a husband and wife. <laughs> and they operate a business. And I've worked with them off and on on a number of things. But they have employees and their employees, they're having a hard time keeping employees. And we've identi- we've really boiled it down to the two of them have different ways of managing the employees and it creates tension. So we're going to start working on that because they need to. And they feel comfortable with me. So th- I'm, I'm, I'm honored. This is kind of cool. So they're going to come here this evening after work and we're kind of going to have a, a, I don't want to call it therapy because I'm certainly not licensed in that way, but we're going to have a discussion. We're going to start talking about how they can meet in the middle. And a lot of the reason I bring this up is when I work with somebody on something like this, which to a certain degree is outside of my wheelhouse comfort zone, I fall back on martial arts and the way that I teach martial arts. If you have students in your class and they're not comfortable with each other, maybe because they don't trust each other, maybe because one of them's, you know, punched hard, too hard before, or the others missed a block before and things haven't gone quite right. How do you work with them to repair that? Well, you help them go slow and you help them do some drills to trust each other. I'm not expecting any martial arts coming out of this, but I can apply that same sort of logic. And so I'm looking forward to it. But at the same time, this house is not really set up for guests. (laughs) This house is set up for content. There are tripods and lights everywhere. It looks like I'm shooting episodes of the real world, but it's just me. So we got a bunch of picking up and moving plants to do. That's a big part of what's going on today. I will not get nearly as many steps as I did this weekend. I think Saturday was 15,000. Yesterday was almost 10. I got some walking in. It was nice. It was nice to walk. Stacy says management counseling. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what we're doing. So I'm digging that. All right. I'm going to go. I'm going to go set up tomorrow's show on Facebook and here with StreamYard. So if you've got questions or comments for tomorrow for Tuesday's episode, I want to hear. So that link, I posted that above. It's Facebook, First Cup with Jeremy. You can post there and I'll read it tomorrow. So I appreciate all of you, whether you watched live or you watched later, you listened later. Thank you for all that you do. Go check out today's episode of Martial Arts Radio with Sensei David Hogsett. And if you're up for it, supporting us on a Patreon or making a purchase in the store at whistlekick.com with the code FIRSTCUP15 for 15% off, you can still get a free training day t-shirt. There's a chance, I, I'm not quite sure, You, I don't think we can rush them, so I doubt you're going to get it in time, but you can still remember the event if you're coming, and I hope that you do. I hope to see as many of you there as possible. We're looking at our biggest attendance yet by far. And I'm super duper excited about that. If you have friends, bring them too. Have a great day, everybody. I will see you back here tomorrow bright and early. Take care. Thank you. Peace.